Hello everyone, this is Atreya and welcome to our channel CodeChef. Today we are going to be solving the problem coronavirus spread with the difficulty level of cakewalk. There are no such prerequisites to solve this problem, so let's get started. Here it's given to us that n people are on a street and they are numbered from 1 to n. Now for simplicity, we'll view them as points on a line. So there are n people here and they are given n, the value of n. For each valid i, for each valid i, the position of the i person, person is xi. Now it turns that exactly one of these people is infected, but we do not know which one. The virus will spread from an infected person to a non-infected person whenever the distance between them is at most two. So this is the important condition that a virus will spread from an infected to a non-infected person whenever the distance between them is at most two. So as, as long as the distance is lesser than or equal to two, is at most two, the virus will spread. For example, if this guy is an infected guy and this guy is at position three, and let's say this guy is at position 1 and this guy is at position 4. Because from 3 to 4, the distance is 1, d equal to 1 here. If this guy is infected, for example, let me write here infected. So let's say this guy is an infected guy and let's say the distance between these two guys are 1. Because the distance is at most 2, it's d is lesser than or equal to 2, this guy will also get infected. And this guy will also get infected because this distance is 2. So so the virus spreads as long as the distance is lesser than or equal to 2 between two people and infected and non-infected people. Now if we wait long enough, a specific subset of people get infected and let's call the size the final number of infected people. We want to find out the smallest and largest value of the number of infected people in the best and the worst possible scenario. Let's look at a few sample cases for this. In the first sample case, the distance between these two guys, you know, 3 and 6, the positions, these two guys are th position 3 and position 6, and the difference between the, uh, you know, the distance between these two people are 3. So, if d equal to 3 here in this particular case, there is no way, like, more than one person gets infected. If the person 3 gets infected, only he gets infected, he cannot infect anyone else, because distance between 3 and 6 is 3, which is greater than 2. And then if the guy uh, with position 6, if the second guy gets infected, he cannot infect the first guy. Because again, the distance is 3. So in the best and the worst possible cases, only one person gets infected. Either the person 3 or uh, person 3 or the person person 6. Now in this particular case, for 1, 3 and 5, these are the positions. These are the, this is the xi array given to us. These are the positions of the 3 people. This guy is at position 1, this guy is at position 3 and this guy is at position 5. Now, let's say that, uh, you know, let, let's simulate for each person. Let's say in my first case, I'm assuming that this first, but let's call this guy person X, person Y and person Z. So here I'm assuming that person X is the one person infected because in the sample, in the problem statement, if you remember, it says that exactly one of these guys are infected at the starting. So let's simulate. We will simulate all the cases where, uh, you know, uh, the person infected can be one of these three. So the first case, the X is infected. First case, person X is infected. So this guy is infected. So in this case, what happened? This is the infected guy's position and this is 3 and 5. Now, the difference between these two, I'm writing on top. This is distance what I'm writing. 1, one and 3. Distance 2, 3 and 5. Distance is 2. So the person 1 is infected or the person X is infected. He will transmit the virus to person 3. This person 3 will transmit the virus to person 5. So 3 people are infected in this case. Let's simulate person Y. Let's say person Y is infected here. If person Y is infected, this means that initially this guy is infected. This is person X, person Y, person Z. We are telling person Y is the first person infected. Because the distance between these two are lesser than or equal to 2. D is basically 2 here, lesser than or equal to 2. So it transmits to this guy. And now 3 to 5, the distance is 2 and again virus transmits to this guy. So in this case also 3 people are infected. So let's say Z is infected. If Z is infected, this particularly means that the person in position 5 is infected. If person in position 5 is infected, the difference between these two guys are at most 2. This guy also gets infected. At most 2, 3 minus 1, this guy also gets infected. So in all the cases, in the best and the worst possible case, no matter who gets infected first, all of them end up getting infected. So in the best and worst possible cases, 3, 3 is the answer. Now for this case, it... Um, I suggest you will pause the video and try this out, but I do it here also because this is kind of a bigger case. Now let's say this is a person A, B, C, D, E. So first we are assuming that person A is infected. 
if person A is the one who is infected first, how much will it transfer? The, the distance, I write the distance on the top. So distance between 1 and 2 is basically 1. So this is less than or equal to 2. So 2 is, 2 is also infected. But now 2 cannot infect 5. Why cannot the person at position 2 infect the person at position 5? Because the difference between the positions or the distance in this case is 3. 3 is greater than 2. So this person will not get infected. Hence, this person will not get infected. This person will not get infected. So the person A is the one infected. Two people get infected. Now let's say person B gets infected first. If person B gets infected first, this is person B. Because this person gets infected first, this person can infect the person at position 1 because their distance is lesser than or equal to 2. But they cannot infect the person at position 5 because the distance is greater than 2 because this distance is 3. In this case also 2 people get infected. I just write this as number of infected people. Here. Now let's say person C gets infected. If person C gets infected first, if person C gets infected, this is person C. So person C cannot infect, uh, infect person B because let me just write this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, this is E. Person C cannot infect person B because the difference between their positions or the distance is greater than 2. It is 3. But this person can infect this person because the difference between their positions is 1. So the distance is lesser than or equal to 2. So this person will also infect this person here. So in this case, three people are infected. Now let's let's look at the case where D gets infected first. If D gets infected first, the person, the position of the person D is actually six. If this person gets infected, this person can infect this guy. This person can also infect this guy because the difference between the positions of the distance is one here and it's one here. They cannot propagate further because the distance here is three, right? So, two peop uh, three people are infected. One, two, three. Three people are infected in this case. Now, let's say E is the person infected. One, two, five, six, seven. So, if this person, E is the one infected, who can he infect? He can infect this person at position six. He can infect this person at position five. But he cannot infect the person at position two. And hence, by extension, he cannot infect the person at position one. So three people are infected in this case. So in the best possible case for this particular test case, in the best possible case, only two people got infected. And the worst possible case, three people got infected. So I hope this is clear. So how, what will our approach be? We are given this array of integers here of n elements and we have positions of x here. We have x1, we have x2, we have x3, we have xn. Because of the constraints of this problem, it is sufficient to simulate the problem. So what do I mean by simulate? Simulate for every xi best and worst possible case. So compute the, com, com, just compute number of infected people. What we did here in the sample cases, we'll do the same thing. So what we're going to do in this particular case is we will simulate for every xi and we'll assume that this particular xi is the only one infected. So we'll start our loop by assuming that x1 is the infected person first. Now, if x1 is an infected person, how much is the number of infected people? Let's say count is equal to number of infected people. Then we'll have two variables. We will have the best case and we will have the worst case. Best case will be nothing but the minimum of overall xi. Now, worst case is nothing but maximum number of infected people overall xi. So this is just the approach. So first we will do for x1 and we will get two values. I mean, we'll get one value, count count one. Let's call this count one. Where if xi x1 is the first person infected, how many number of infected people do we end up with? Count one. Similarly, for x2, we have the number of infected people if x2 is the first person infected. So final count of infected people. Similarly, for x3, we do the same thing. We have count three. So on and so forth till xn, we have count 10. Now, over all the counts, if we find the minimum count, minimum number of infected people, we know that is corresponding to the best case because the minimum number of people are infected. If we find the maximum over all these counts, we know that is the worst case. So, I hope this part is. Now, let us look at the code for this uh, approach that we have just discussed. Now, here, after inputting the position array, we have two variables, best case and worst case. Now, best case, if you remember, is the minimum number of people infected. So, we find minimum there. And worst case, we find maximum. So, initially, best case will be int max and worst case will be int min for this purpose. Now, what we will do is simulate a brute force approach where we first assume that ARRI is the only one infected at the start. So, the infected person is ARR of I. From that position, 
you can the virus can go left and go right what is the furthest position left that the virus can go that will denote the furthest person infected for example if there are many persons like a b c d e f and let's assume that currently we are testing for person c from four person if person c is the only one infected at this iteration this virus can transmit from person c to d e f right side it can also go left side to b and a like we saw in the example so we need to find out the furthest left it can go and the furthest right it can go. The furthest left it can go is basically if B minus C, if the distance between these two is less than equal to 2, the virus goes to B also. Now the difference between B and A, if it's less than equal to 2, it goes to A also. Similarly, if the difference between C and D is less than equal to 2, D is infected. If D and E, the difference is less than equal to 2, it gets transmitted. So what we do is, this is the position I, let's assume, the current position. So from I, go left as long as the adjacent difference is lesser than or equal to 2 the distance is lesser than or equal to 2 if the distance is lesser than or equal to 2 it means that the virus is transmitted from the infected person at position i to the infected person at position i minus 1 if arr i minus arr i minus 1 less than or equal to 2 so we do left minus minus just in a similar fashion we do we find the rightmost position by just a similar approach if you are at i position and the person in position i plus 1, the difference between i and i plus 1 is less than or equal to 2, i plus 1 person is also infected. Similarly, you find the rightmost position. Now, we find the infected count as right minus left plus 1, the whole count, that's our array. And we do best case, we find the minimum. Worst case, we find the maximum. Now, if you notice, this is kind of a brute force approach where we have one outer loop and two inner loops here but there is a way to improve this solution by using a difference array and do this in linear time basically so i want you to pause the video and just try to uh, try you know try the solution i mean it's not needed for this problem because the brute force solution itself passes the test cases due to the small constraints but it's a good challenge and it's a great solution if you can figure out the linear approach by yourself by using the uh, difference array also so here in this case, after you find the infected count by simulating each person getting infected and find the minimum and maximum, we just output for every test case, the best case and the worst case. Hope this part is clear. Hey guys, that was it. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you haven't yet done this, this is a gentle reminder to hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in competitive programming and data structures, this channel is a one-stop solution for you. See you in the next video. Bye.